I'm going to share exactly what stock I just bought more of today. It's my highest risk, highest reward position with expected 200% plus revenue growth in the next year. I'm also going to run through how, exactly how I grade and score my watch list stocks to help me think about what stocks go into my portfolio. We're going to talk about what metrics I look at, and I'm just going to share my approach to long-term investing. I'm building a $1 million portfolio right here on YouTube. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. All right, first up, as always, full portfolio review. So here's the portfolio, $61,117. We are down $10,800. We've put in $72,000. Reminder, over time, we're gonna put $370,000 or more maybe into this portfolio. So. We still got a lot of the way to go. I'm not worried about being down. This is a long-term portfolio and I am very confident in the companies I own. Full disclosure, this is the comp these are the companies I own right here. $10,000 into Snowflake, 10,000 in CrowdStrike, 8,000 in Datadog, 7,000 in GitLab, 6,000 in Rocket Lab. This is the stock I just bought at more of today. We'll talk more about that in a second. 5,000 in Tesla, 4,000, almost 5,000 in Mongo Database, almost 5,000 in the Trade Desk, and just over 4,000 in Cloudflare. So let me tell you why I just added more to Rocket Lab today. You can see I own 1,607 shares at an average share price of $4.94 for a $7,940 cost basis. I will probably add up to a $12,000 cost basis to this stock and then just let it go from there. If it works, it works. If it goes to zero, I would accept losing $12,000 uh, over time when I'm thinking about adding $370,000 total to this portfolio. That's how I think about that risk reward. This is not a pump and dump. This I tell people that I'm buying this before I buy it because it is a small market cap stock, $1.8 billion. I want to let people buy it before me if they want to, and then I am not going to sell this thing for five or 10 years unless something catastrophic happens with the company. I don't care what happens with the stock price. If the company stops executing, they stop getting orders, something dangerous happens out of the ordinary of occasional occasional mishaps that they learn from and improve on, that's when I would sell this stock, not because the stock price goes down or if it like 10 X's from here, but I don't think that's gonna happen over any short period of time. So anyways, plan to hold this thing for a long time. That is exactly the position size and I bought more today, I shared, a YouTube video saying I was going to buy more a couple days ago. You can see it in the feed. I shared an email newsletter, austin.substack.com, link below, telling people I was buying it and more on the thesis why. So I'm trying to be very transparent because this is a very small company. Don't want it to seem like I'm getting in front of people or anything like that. Okay, so just a quick news flash from this week. They launched a huge successful mission, the Capstone mission which was in partnership with NASA. And essentially, Rocket Lab was the chosen provider by NASA to test a new orbit that NASA plans to use to essentially put a space station into that is going to be used to kind of like refit or as a rest or swap area for astronauts that are on future longer missions to the moon. It all sounds crazy, but the point, the thing to remember is that, and look, you can see my email newsletter or look at Rocket Lab if you wanna learn more about this specific mission. This mission was a milestone. They'd never used this orbit before and they're testing, they're using this mission as a test for more future missions, which is why it's ex it was a huge mission for Rocket Lab and it went really well so far. Extremely bullish for them over the long term, in my opinion. All right, let's get to how I grade stocks on my watch list. And I'm gonna show you every stock on my watch list that I grade. I have a scoring model. I use Y charts for this. I put in the things that I look for, gross profit margin, profit margin, enterprise value to revenues forward. Leave, let me know in the comments if you want me to do videos about these specific metrics and explain them more. I would love to do that if people are interested in it. Average diluted share. So are they issuing a lot of shares for stock-based compensation? Revenue growth estimate for the current year. Free cash flow as a percentage of annual revenues and then SGNA expense as a percentage of annual revenue. So I want to know how free cash flow looks as a percentage of annual revenue and how their SGNA expenses look as a percentage of annual revenue. Then I give them each a weight. I like companies that have a long track or long pathway to grow revenues. So I heavily weight revenue growth 40%, but I also weight profitability metrics. And although 
I'm okay owning companies that aren't currently profitable. I want there to be a weighting in there. So if they're super unprofitable, they get penalized. But I also want to see them making progress towards being profitable. So gross profit margin, 20% weight. Profit margin, 10% weight. EV to revenue. So thinking about valuation a little bit, 10%. I'm not as concerned with EV to revenue as I am with revenue growth because if this is higher, if their revenue growth is higher, the EV to revenue comes down. That's why I'm okay with owning a snowflake when the enterprise value to revenue is very high. I think their revenue growth is going to make that smaller over time and take care of the stock price performance. 5% 5% for diluted shares, 40% for revenue growth, 5% for free cash flow, and 10% for SGNA expense. So I can have my watch list out and I've got them all listed and then I can score the watch list according to this growth curve score. And this is how they rank order score uh, according to that scoring system. Now, you'll notice I don't own Meta, I don't own Adobe, I don't own Microsoft, so I don't just blindly follow this score, but I do think these are pretty high quality companies, and I think that there's an argument for you know having a watch list, having a scoring system, and then just owning an even amount of all of those, those stocks, or owning you know a little bit more of the, the stocks that score higher because you think they're safer or whatever, and then basing you know how large your position size is based off how low it scores. That could be one way that people do it. So anyways, I just kind of have watch list stocks that I think are relatively high quality. I have a couple that I'm not so sure on, on here. I score them and then I go deeper into them and decide which ones I want to actually own. I have a very concentrated portfolio, only I think seven stocks right now, or is it nine? Um, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, nine stocks and very high concentrations. I don't recommend that for anybody, but anyways, here is how the stocks score. Facebook, Meta is no, is number one, and I think there might be a huge opportunity in Meta, but the thing is, is figuring out this Metaverse thing, this AR, VR thing, how much are they gonna spend, and is their model sustainable? I don't know, that's why I don't own the stock right now. Adobe, very strong company, and if we look, their EV to revenue forward is only 9.6. That's much lower than it used to be, but they're only expected to grow 12% in the, in the next year, so that growth isn't going to be strong, but it's hard to find a more cash flow balance sheet stable company than Adobe. Microsoft's another one. Uh, enterprise value to revenue forward of eight with expected 18% growth. So actually Microsoft is looking a little cheaper on an EV to revenue basis than Adobe. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, Microsoft scores up high. Uh, AMD has gotten actually much more reasonable and much cheaper. It's coming in at number four. Enterprise value to revenue of 4.5 with 60% expected revenue growth. Zoom is also a high scorer, five. Uh, EV to revenue, 5.8 with expected 12% revenue growth. Kathy Wood just came out with like a $1 billion price target estimate for Zoom. I think that's insane, but Zoom might be an interesting buy here. Um, Google has a EV to forward revenue of 4.4 with expected uh, 16% revenue growth for the quarter. Um, The Trade Desk, this is the first stock that I own. So you notice the number eight stock is the first one I own. Um, Enterprise value to revenue of 12 with 33% expected expected revenue growth for the current fiscal year. I think they have a very long runway of revenue growth ahead. Mercado Libre, I love this stock. It's just, I'm not sure how e-commerce is going to pan out in this macro environment, but eventually, maybe even right now, Mercado Libre is a fantastic buy. Um, HubSpot is up there. High quality company, again, in my opinion, 7.8 EV to revenue with 32% expected revenue growth. Atlassian, it's finally getting cheaper. Uh, EV to revenue of 13 uh, with expected 32% revenue growth this, this year. Monday ranks way up there, but I have some questions about their sustainability and their, it's a competitive market. Uh, how can they become profitable? When will they become profitable? Coinbase, probably a good buy because crypto has just been destroyed, but I'm staying away from that one. I don't I don't have to own it. And because I own concentrated a concentrated portfolio, I have larger position sizes. I'm not willing to take that risk because I wouldn't be confident to have a large enough position in Coinbase for it to really matter. So I'd rather just own something else, even though it might look like there's more upside in Coinbase if crypto really works out. That's how I think about it. Rocket Lab, 
very risky, but I do have a relatively large position size for the current portfolio. I told you I'm going to build that thing up to $12,000 and then just let it go. Um, to, this is what I was talking about, 240% expected revenue growth this year. And it's not going to continue growing that fast, but they are expected to grow revenue like 40, 50% for many years to come. Shopify fan, or Salesforce, fantastic company, finally getting cheap again with 20% uh, expected revenue growth. Shopify. Um, again, this is where it's like, okay, Salesforce EV to revenue is five. Shopify is 5.6. Salesforce is expected to grow 20% this year. Shopify 26%. Which one's a better buy? Um, I, I don't know exactly. I would probably lean towards, this is where it's like, I might eventually want some e-commerce exposure and do, you know, small positions in Mercado Libre and Shopify and then just call it good. Um, service now again, Datadog, I own this one, right? Uh, EV to revenue for 18 with 57% expected revenue growth this year. Tesla, EV to revenue of eight with 59% revenue growth. And I know we need to look at PE multiples and stuff like that, but this is what I'm looking at for uh, the sake of speed right now. I own CrowdStrike, uh, EV to revenue uh, forward of 17 with expected 52% revenue growth. If you want access to this list, I send this stuff out in a weekly review to my email subscribers, austin.substack.com. I also do in-depth write-ups for the subscribers on the, the buys that I do and things like that. And then YouTube is a way I can kind of talk about it at a higher level and expose it to more people and hopefully expose long-term investing to more people. But if you want some more details, you can find it in the description. Follow me on Twitter as well. Talk about stocks all the time at Lieberman Austin. And then finally, check out commonstock.com. It is, in my opinion, the best investing community on the web. I've got a link to that in the description as well. Have a great weekend. Stay positive. The market's crazy and I'm staying invested long-term. I'm not getting scared out of the market.